So who is Jay Preston and what is Jay Million Color? Okay, well I was oh, looking at the mess up already. <laughs> I would just describe myself I don't know, just really hard working, strong passionate like that's just me i'm nice i'm loving people say i'm funny but i don't see what be so funny because i be dead serious all the time you i can tell you're funny because especially on instagram some of the stuff <laughs> like you can tell you just being you know, just like being yourself but yeah like you everybody know, say i be acting like i'm i'm not from this world <laughs> i wouldn't say all that now but jamie leon color I'm thinking that I want it to soon be my 24 hour spa. Like, I don't want to just do nails. Like, right now, I'm fo my main focus point is the nails because, of course, that's going to be the main thing. But I do want it to be like a whole 24 hour spa. Okay. So, I'm starting to get into like facials. I want to do full body massages. I want to like a whole bunch of stuff in a spa. It's going to be lit. Once we get to that point. It's gonna be lit. But like, like I've been telling you since I brought the whole idea of uh, featuring you on a podcast, and the reason why I wanted to feature feature you on my podcast is because the fact that you're doing something that nobody's doing, like not even grown people are doing. Like, yeah. who's gonna waste 24 hours out of their day to go and <laughs> spend and cater and pamper somebody when really in all actuality? A lot of people might get off late and they're like, oh my God, I want to go. I wish I could get my nails done. I couldn't do it. I'm a doctor. I work after hours. All this kind of stuff. So, it really catering to a whole bunch of people. Yeah, because a lot of people don't have time out of the day to, you know, let me go get my nails done. Like, I, when I was working at a nail salon, I did have one client. She used to come on her lunch break. But then it's like, even on my on her lunch break, you can't really sit down and really get pampered how you want to. So the whole point of me being 24 hours is just imagine, like, being a, a woman and you have to do everything. Like, we we know that women do everything and for their families. And some of us are, like, the main supporters of our families. Mm -hmm. So just imagine, you know, I could wake up. Say I can't sleep, but all my ch children are asleep. You know, I could wake up and I'm about to go get my nails done real quick. I'm about to sneak out. I'm about to sneak out. Get my nails done. You know, that's how I see it because I don't know. And then I just like I like catering to people. I've always worked ever since I was little, so working all night and everything, it's nothing. Especially when you love what you do, yeah, it's nothing. Yeah. So. I love to make people happy. I love to sit down and talk to people, see how their day went. And most of the time, that's how some people come here. Like, as you can see now, I barely have, this is this is the setup. Yeah. And that's how I do the pedicures with that little bucket and a high chair. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those ladies, they come in here and they sit down, they read their books. And some of them will be like, do I got to go home for real? And I'll be like, <laughs> after I'm done, yeah. But I like it. And that's that's what it is really about, like like you said, doing something that you love to do and you don't wanna actually like think about oh what what am I getting for this because you already have the um satisfaction of catering to others. So, um, what was your career plan in high school and when and how did that change? So when I was in high school, I'll tell you right now, I didn't know what I wanted to do. At all. I feel like I just decided what I wanted to do, which is this whole spa thing. But in high school, if somebody was to ask me that, I would say be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why I would say be a lawyer, but that's like the first thing that comes to mind, you know? Yeah. Be a lawyer. And then in my household, you really didn't have a choice. It was either you're going to go to school. It wasn't like... You know, parents don't think to say, oh, you could be an entrepreneur. The first yeah. thing they think to say is, you either going to go to school or you going to go to the military. Mm -hmm. And I really never knew, like, what exactly was the plan. It was just at the moment, like I said, I've been working since I was little. So when I was in high school, I was working these jobs, making my little high school money, and going to school. That was it. Like, I didn't know too much or nothing else so yeah 
I really just decided. I'm not even going to lie. I just, like, recently got it together. And I actually had to, you know, pray and ask, like, what was my purpose for? Because for a long time, I was down because I didn't know my purpose. I was going through so much. I really didn't have a mother and a father to, you know, mm -hmm. be around and support a dream or anything like that. Yeah. It was always just me by myself, by my lonely. So... That really is like praying and then just, you know, letting him guide me and take me to where he wanted me to be really helped me. So, okay. And just for the viewers, well, the listeners, my, um, I call them my peacemakers. So, um, let them know, like, how old you are and stuff. So, I am 21. Woo woo, legal. <laughs> I, yeah, I'll be 22 in December. Okay. 28th. Three days after Christmas. Yes, I want both gifts. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm like, Okay, so how did you get the name J. Million? Okay, I made it up. I made it up because <laughs> I think I'm a superstar. Like, I swear, if you talk to anybody that knows me, they, like I said, they'll say, this girl, like, you can't tell her, like, she not no superstar. And that's how I carry myself, like, when I be walking around, I be like, I can't look like this because they're going to say, look at the J. Million looking like a damn fool. I told you, you change your hair every five seconds. You like, uh, what's that, um, the genie lady who, she be like, Whoop, and then she, <laughs> she changed her outfit and stuff. Like, you literally change your hair every five seconds, but... I have to, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a, a way to express myself, and then, like I said, my sister does hair, mm -hmm. so, you know, that's something for her to do, and she could show what she can do and what she's good at, so it's perfect. Everything works out in mysterious ways, actually. Yeah. So. Okay. So, um, how was J. Million Color born? So that was born, be first of all, I wanted it to be different. I didn't just want to say, you know, colors or yeah. something like that. So I actually looked up. <laughs> I was looking up different ways to say color. And mm -hmm. then that's when the color came up. So I did that. And then I just took my name because for a long time, I've always said, I just want something that's mine. Mm -hmm. So what's better than to, you know, put my name on something? Yeah. So I did. And I just added the color part. And it just went through. And then we came up with the, well, you know, we yet, but soon. It'll be yeah. We. But I came up with the whole 24 hour thing because it's like, that's, that's different. Like, nobody's doing nails 24 hours, like you said. Like, who yeah. wants to, you know? But I do because it's refreshing, it's creative. And most of the time, I just get people that say, you know, do whatever you want to. So, okay. So, as of now, what products and services do you offer? Um, and which products and services is, I mean, or services um, is your favorite and why? So, of course, doing full sets. And, okay, huh, let me go back. So, I do offer facials, pedicures, manicures, and, of course, your um, full sets of nails right now. Um, my favorite one would be doing the full sets, but not just any kind of full set. It would have to be my freestyle sets. And like I said, I do those majority of the time, freestyle sets. Like, I love them because I don't really have to sit here and say, well, what you want? What you want to do? Because yeah, usually they'll come with a picture and it's not going to look like that. And I try not to recreate too much. Like, I want everything out of my salon or my spa to come unique. Like, you can't sit there and say, oh, I know. You, you can't yeah. replicate it, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And what was it? My least favorite? No, you're, so your, what's your favorite? Yeah. So, of them all and why? So, that would be my favorite. Okay. Being unique, I love it. Okay. I love it, love it, love it. So, what is the shortest amount of time it is taking you to do a full set? Mm, okay. Full sets usually have to go about an hour. So, I'll say, yeah, around that time, an hour. 
Because okay. I try to take my time. I don't want to feel like, you know, you're being rushed. I don't want you to feel like I, I don't care about your nails. And that's most of the time where most of my clients say they go to a regular nail salons now. And it's just like people are trying to get you in and out so they can get the next customer in. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to be like that. I want to I wanna take our time. I want to make sure that you like your shape. Like throughout the whole process, I always sit down and I say, you like it? Like even when I get done shaping, I'll say, you like it? Um, just to make sure because you don't want somebody to be unhappy. I don't want you to feel like, oh, like, you got to keep them. Yeah. Because, no, you're like, this is your money. Like, what do you like? Tell me, do you like it? Did you hate it? What can I change? So I always try to, you know, keep it at an hour. I want it to be at an hour, at least an hour. And if it happens to go over, then that's fine as well. Okay. So what is the... Longest amount of time it has taken you to do a full set. Y'all, when I first started, six hours. For oh real. my lord. For real, for real. And because I'm a perfectionist. Mm-hmm. So I think I've um, gotten to the point where I can kind of, you know, pick pick out and see, you know, what needs to be done. So I won't take that long. But yeah, when I first started, open doing nails in an hour i was taking like six hours and then as time kept going on four hours and and those are for basic full sets now mm-hmm. if somebody wanted such as a freestyle then yeah of course i'm gonna spend it like an yeah. hour or two on it you know because you Be- gotta make sure you get yeah. what you want and then you know some people come they want full rhinestones so yeah but yeah six hours was the longest and it was long, and that was just a basic one. I still got it on my phone. Oh, basic. And but I mean, at least you saw the growth, and you saw okay, what can I do to shorten my um, time on something like this? What can I do to be more um, concerned when it comes to a person's um, what do you call it? Their needs and their wants when it comes to the. Um, the service that they're trying to achieve and stuff. So, right. I mean, that that's always good to recognize the growth and not be a person that's like, okay, well, this is how long it's gonna take you, so you can go find somebody else to get it. Yeah, no, like even with people who are just starting, they'll come and they'll say, well, you know, how can I um make my speed like get my speed up? And it's like you really can't, you really can't. You just have to practice. Yeah, you just gotta practice. Like after a while. Because nails is is repetitive. Mm -hmm. I like to do... I wouldn't say I like. I take that back. Because I get bored easily. Hence the reason why y'all, I would quit a million jobs. I I cannot get another job because I've had every job. Like, I can't do it. Like, mm -mm. But it's repetitive. You have to keep... You got to keep doing it over and over again. So... After a while, y'all doing nails out there, you know, don't worry about speed. Because you these are steps, like, mm-hmm. drill, file, nail bed, tips. Then it's whatever you want to do after that. Once you get those mm-hmm. tips on, after that, it's, it's free game. After that, it's, it's whatever you got going on. You can have somebody that is on basic. Like, last night, I had somebody who wanted basic white. And then we just added glitter on the top at it. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like it took me 30 minutes to do. Okay. But it took me the, the hour, but it you took always, me the There's always a, a routine that you have to get down to to learn the foundations for something. Whether it's singing, it's dancing, you got to learn the basics. Yeah. And then you add on everything on top of it, how you want it to go. So, I mean, it is what it is. And that's just something you have to learn does. You can go around it if you want to, but, I mean, it's not going to be the right way. And you're going to be mad when, guess what, something doesn't turn out how it needs to be turned out. So Right. But I was going to say, so living in Savannah where there are a variety of entrepreneurs emerging, how does, um, well, how do you set your business apart from others? Or when you were creating your business, how did you, um, what was your thought process on it, setting apart from others? So, when I was creating my business, I I knew I always wanted to make sure that, you know, I connect with the customers. Um, I 
talk with the people because they like that. Like, I feel like every entrepreneur should know that. And I yeah. literally just told my sister that, like, people love when you talk to them. People love Me people when person. they feel like they can connect with you because you're being personal. Like, a lot mm-hmm. of people don't like being an open book because it's like you don't want people to know your business. Yeah. But at the same time, the people love that. People are nosy as fuck. Yeah. And not even <laughs> that, like, like you said, building up a rapport because, like, you going to feel more comfortable saying, okay, Say if uh, my hair was falling out because I was eating a whole bunch of chocolate. And I see you eating chocolate and I'm like, girl, you know, um, I used to eat chocolate a lot. You like, oh, what, what chocolate you was eating? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, okay, well, I just want to tell you this because I don't want it to happen to you. Mm-hmm. Like, you just find common ground and then you go from there. You see how the person is and then you say, okay, whether you want to open up to them or not on your own. So, yeah. building that rapport, it does. That's it why helps. a lot of celebrities, they, okay, they on there talking, telling their business so that people can, they can gain more followers and they have more people in their business. When it's all, it's all for, for people to be in their business. The people. Like, I'm all for the people. At the end of the day, I'm for the people. Like, I don't have nothing to hide. Hopefully, one day when I get big, somebody don't go in my Twitter and find something bad that I said. But, shit, I don't have nothing to hide. Like I said, if I said that I said it, I want people to know what's going on so that they could feel like, you know, we're in this together. And this to is, see the growth. I yeah. Mean, just because everybody's not going to have everything together, like stuff we said when we were 16 and 17 and on MySpace and Facebook and tagged and the Bebo, all kind of stuff. Like, all that stuff is when your mind was not developed is, like, you haven't been through the experiences that you have been through now. So, a lot of people don't understand that. Um, and, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's really the growth. Yeah, and so, like, when people come here, they automatically already feel like they know me because I've already been so open on social media. Mm -hmm. So, it's like, this is my friend. Like, when they come in here, they're open and they're willing to talk. And I always say, like, me being a nail tech, I feel like I'm a diary for everybody. Like, I know everybody's business, but I'm not going to tell you. Yeah. Because I got a lock. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I love it, man. So, I would say that's what sets me apart. Like, I... I'm I'm y'all sister. Like I'm here to talk to you when you're down, and you know I'm just here to listen and pamper. Yeah, that's it. Like I'm telling y'all my story, and you can tell me yours. Yeah, and that's another reason. Like with my podcast, and even on social media, like I, I mean, a lot of people like, why do you put your business out there? Like certain things, like when last year when I had a miscarriage and stuff, like I put it on YouTube and everything, just because I wanted other people to like know what I went through. And hey, a lot of people not talking about it, and like none of my friends used to talk about it. They might have told me, but like there, a lot of people don't know that. Okay, a lot of women go through this. Yeah. Not just black women, not just white women. Every one in four women go through miscarriages. So like. When I did that and I started to open up, like, that's when, like, my podcast, like, just me in general, like, a lot of people started wanting to connect with me, want to do business with me, just because of the level of respect that they have for me, um, with me having that mentality of, okay, I'm going to just lay it all out on the table and I'm going to be an open book because not just wanting to tell my business, but to wanting to help others as well. And that's what it's all about, like... When you could, when it, it helps when someone else can share their story because a lot of us are scared to speak out and yeah. say something because we're scared of what people think. And uh, like you said, why are you putting your business all the way out there? And it's because, you know, a lot of people are going through this, but nobody is going to say anything because. It's life. It's, yeah. Mm-hmm. So. so, along your process when you were creating your business, even still now, like. Did anyone doubt you, especially when it comes to comparing you to local um, brands or um, other people who are, like, well-known nail techs? Um, like, oh, you're just trying to be, like, so-and-so. And you know what? No. Um, I feel like the city 
has really been my biggest support rather than my mm-hmm. family and everything. And I actually wrote something on Facebook about that because I was like, you know, strangers, they going to go to bed. Like, I, mm-hmm. I know some strangers that haven't even came to me to get their nails done, but they go hard for me. Like, they Sharing they posts they stuff. share polls. This they say this is the hardest girl in the poll. Like y'all gotta go to her, and it's like yeah. y'all ain't never even been to me, but they support me that hard. Mm-hmm. So I never I don't know. Like I haven't met anyone yet who's like you know you just trying to be like such and such, and I try not to even be like such and such mm-hmm. so nobody could even say you know. But yeah, the like you said at the very beginning, the way you carry yourself is the way that you present to others. If you like a, a obnoxious person, you think you all that and stuff, and then people gonna that. think that, okay, she she just trying to be doing this and that, mm-hmm. and it's really not gonna help the situation. So, I, I really think that you have your head on straight, and when it comes to knowing what you want and how to present yourself to others um what are some things whether it's books scriptures quotes or um just anything that keeps you motivated and grounded when times get tough so i'll be honest i have actually just got into uh the bible Mm -hmm. um and that goes back because my my parents my biological parents Mm -hmm. And I sometimes, you know, I try not to really um, say too much about them because I don't want it to seem as, you know, I'm hating them or anything like that. But again, like I mean, we, nobody can't judge you. Yeah. They ne- they never been in your shoes and they don't know what you go through. So whatever you're speaking out on, a lot of people they can't speak on and they can't have an opinion because they don't know. So I mean, if they do have an opinion, that's just them being them. Yeah. They it's not really helping the situation with them. So But I just really got into like let me see a pen. I really just got into the whole Bible thing and I would wanna think that to my sister and her mom. Mm-hmm. Um, they actually helped me get into that. And for a long time, I feel like that's why I was struggling so long and I didn't know what I wanted to do because I wasn't really connected with anything. Yeah. Um, I was str- like, y'all, I was struggling. Like, I didn't know where I would be. Um, I remember going to church one day and... I was called out and, you know, I had to go to the front because the prophet had a message for me. Um, And her message was actually that I was going to kill myself when I was 19. Um, That hit me because I was suicidal. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Again, I didn't know where my life was going. I didn't have my mom. My aunt was taking care of me, but her son had also just killed himself. Mm -hmm. So... That whole situation was crazy for someone to take me in and their own child has just killed their self. And here I am with the same problems and I felt like I had to hide them and keep them. Yeah. Keep them away because, you know, I didn't want my aunt to worry so much about me. Yeah. But, you know, it was... I um. So now, I guess the only thing that's really keeping me going or something that would, you know, keep me going is just I got to do it. Because at the end of the day, all I got is myself. And, that again, the support that I get from everybody is really amazing because I never felt no support like that at all. Yeah. So, I'm thankful for it now. Like, I'm thankful that I'm kind of sort of transitioning out of the, the depression so. I mean, it all takes time, and I mean, the more you talk about the situations that bother you the most, and the things that you really want to work work on, and like get out your comfort zone and like heal from, that's what really will help you. And I'm I'm like I'm a testimony to that, like because like people would think, oh, she lost her baby and stuff, and even. She was talking about it like three, four days later. Like yeah. it was because I wanted to be an open book, and the fact that while like okay, me and my ex, who is my son's father, um, when we initially got back into our relationship, we were saying okay, well, 
we want to get closer to God. And so, like, every day I would pray with my son um, and everything. Like, I would be watching sermons. I would be doing daily devotionals two, three times a day. I was fasting while I was pregnant. So, shoot. I um ended up, what do you call it? Um, When I was doing all this, um, I ended up getting a lot of clarity from God and I felt safe so whenever that did happen I know that it was the best thing and that was within God's plan so I really wasn't upset about it and that like the fact that I talk about it now and whether I cry or like I'm happy about the situation um like it's just like talking about it helps you understand how you felt what you were going through how like you're going through all the emotions again and you're kind of like laying them out so that you can like understand it and that's how why i i talk about things as much as i do i feel like that's that's my my big i is okay so i guess what i say to myself is and it probably won't make sense to everybody else but this is like something every day if i wake up because y'all i suffer from <laughs> bipolar depression uh -huh. so some days i'll wake up and i'll sit in my room for a week um mm. and i'm thankful to have my sister around because she'll be the one that comes in there and like jay you okay you yeah up? and i'm just like okay whatever and i'll get up and then i'll play and probably for a while but then it's like that's fake because yeah my feelings is really like i don't want to be bothered with yeah so sometimes i have to tell myself you know all, everything that you're going through right now, you have to think of it as where you've been, where you were, and where you're going. Mm -hmm. So that's what I use. Like, I've been here, this is where I was, and this is where I'm going. So yeah, that helps me. That helps me a lot because when I say I have big dreams and I can't, if I want my dreams to come true, they're not going to come true if I'm sitting in that room moping around. Yeah. So I have to say that to myself for me to get up and, you know, do nails. Some days I wake up and I'll be like, I'm not even doing nails. I mean, but at least you understand and you recognize what's what. I mean, someone who doesn't understand it is like, okay, well, I don't know what's going on with me. If you need a day off, there. I mean, hey. We all have some self-care days where we just need to be yeah. to ourselves. So, I mean, don't think of it as a bad thing. Yeah, and I know sometimes mm -hmm. I can take it to the screen. Like, when I said, when I posted and I was like, oh, I ain't doing no no more, y'all boys. That was today's screen because it's like, if you ain't doing else, bitch, what you doing? Because, <laughs> so, like I said, I done exhausted the screens of working anywhere. Mm -hmm. So, it's like, this is it. This is going to either make me or break me right now. So... I mean, it's making you and so break you, girl. Uh, I wouldn't say that. So, throughout your journey, um, have you had any mentors in the cosmetology field or in other industries that have mentored you? I would say the people that I have around me now, mm -hmm. um, which is, uh, I'll say they're um, Alexis Young. Mm -hmm. That's my sister, Lex Lace Me. I have um, Justice Austin, mm -hmm. here by Justice. Um, then you have Taylor Mitchell, Slayer Game Beauty, LLC. Mm -hmm. Those girls, like... All bosses. All bosses. And it's crazy because, you know, I recently just met them this year. That's why mm -hmm. I say it's, it's strange how life works because I had friends around me who didn't have anything going on. Mm -hmm. And it was just, you know... Me trying to, all right, y'all, I'm, I'm trying to boss up so we could da 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 but it's like, I can't carry a whole team yeah, by myself. That, that's why it's like when, I'm glad that when you noticed that and you said that, because God put that in you to say that and to understand <laughs> that you had to do this for you and not try to carry the weight of other people on you. And so that's when he said, all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm letting you let them know that this is what's gonna happen. So and you at least what? you told them <laughs> that it was gonna happen. And that's so crazy because on my 21st birthday, y'all was drunk. Mm -hmm. I was drunk, and I wish somebody would have recorded it because my best friend, many years, was there, 
and I straight up told her. All right. All right. So, what are some misconceptions or frequently asked questions that you want to clear up about um, J. Milan Calor or even about being a nail tech in general? Um. Okay. I just had to write a post about this today. Deposits, twenty dollar deposits, mm -hmm. go towards your survey. Mm -hmm. I have no idea who's out here making you girls pay for your seats and the service. What? But it's not me. I'm not finessing nobody like that. <laughs> like that's crazy to me. Like a lot of people, I think a lot of people would not be saying, you know, oh, make sure you see your twenty dollar deposit you know to for your appointment mm -hmm. i'm thinking i'm now that i'm i'm um, seeing everybody you know ask me all the time you know well what's the 20 dollars for and i'm like well it goes towards your service and they're like oh, oh okay you know yeah. so i don't know who i hear finessing these girls out they good money but it ain't me <laughs> it ain't me um yes we are 24 hours but you have two books that like you have some yes don't just you know don't just think you know you finna come in there 24 hours don't you could come in there 24 hours when i get my own spa and it's mm -hmm. really open 24 hours yeah then we you know but yes i'm 24 hours all you have to do is book it i will stay up i'm not gonna go to sleep on you, <laughs> you know? Girl, let me get this quick now. I'll I take you in after this. Oh, no. Yeah, and even if you, like yesterday, I had somebody um text me. Well, actually, she called me. Mm -hmm. 10 o'clock last night. Oh, my birthday's tomorrow, da, da, da. Like, if you do that, that's fine. Like, mm -hmm. that's even fine. If you catch me while I'm up, that's fine. Yeah. Because, again, I'm 24 hours. I'm not going to lie. When she called me at 10, I was, huh? well, it's kind of sleepy. And I said, <laughs> here I am talking about a damn 24 hours. <laughs> but, yeah. So, yeah, that's how that works. That's how the 24 hours work. It was a fee to do, you know, after hours. But then it's like, after a while... I'm just thinking of the bigger picture. Like, mm -hmm. the bigger picture, once I have my own salon and everything, I'm not going to be charging you a fee to come in there yeah. at night because I'm already 24 hours. So, you know, yeah. just, you know, take it to your advantage while it's here. Like, exactly. <laughs> when the price go up, yes. And you can be like, well, I can't get a sign to book for her. I'm going to pop I will always say, you know, the prices that I have now, Cause I do have a price list, but it's never in effect because I'm always throwing a deal. Mm -hmm. Cause I like deals. I like to, like I said, like I like to see the people happy. Like, yeah, I know how it feels to want to get something luxurious done and you can't because you know you got to do this and you got to do that. You got to pay this bill. So yeah, I'm always throwing deals. But it's also like nowadays everything is becoming. Expensive. If you want to walk out of the house, this five dollars. I would say from a fashion standpoint, a lot of big brands, as far as like, um, uh, Forever Twenty One, um, there's a lot of brands where if you do, um, a lot of companies they've started doing the um four installments. So like after pay type thing, mm -hmm. Sezzle, um. What is the other one? Sezzle, Afterpay, and I think it's like one called Cody or something. But mm -hmm. um, basically, they, they're they doing it where you can break down your payments. And I've even done it. There's a brand called um, My Minimo. Mm -hmm. um, and they sell um, skincare and like beauty products. And I do that for my skincare products. I'm like, okay, if it's offering it, ain't like, oh, girl, you broke, you ain't, no. If yeah. they offering yeah, it, I'm going to sure. do it. That's lighting the work load for me. Guess what? I can save that money to go do something else. I love buying Chick-fil-A. <laughs> I've been on my love vegan stuff, so I ain't been eating Chick-fil-A as much. So, I mean, it works out to its advantages, <laughs> but... I mean, the affordable, the being affordable to people is what really matters because you're not gonna. I'm not gonna charge nobody an arm and a leg for a nail that I know that's gonna last two weeks. Like, no, the girl I seen, <laughs> did you put up the post and that girl had them, them nails for four weeks and it looked like <laughs> she had, like, had them on for like <laughs> a week. Like, her nails was barely even coming off. I'm like, 
Okay, man. She really doing her thing. She had when your work can back it up. Yeah. She had them things on for a long time. Like, sometimes <laughs> my clients be coming here with it. Like, I had that client, she had them on for a month. And I said, girl, why didn't you take them things off? She's like, my girl, I'm taking these shits off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So stuff like that makes me happy. Like to see progress like that and see people come back with nails that on forever is like y'all really fuck with me. Girl, you seen this um uh, when I had this goal on I had this goal on you don't even want to see my toes, but I had that on longer. <laughs> I um I had this nail polish on since I wanna say right before I went to Seattle. So yeah, it's been about a month. Hmm. It's gel nail polish, and I'm girl, I'm letting that jar grow out. I don't care. Yeah. It it don't look that bad unless you all up on my toe. <laughs> and that's what the people do. I'm like, oh. mm -mm. stay out my toes. <laughs> my toes ain't worrying about you. As long as they ain't ate up and they ain't ugly and dripping little juices off of them and they ain't <laughs> crusty, don't worry about them. And you, if you ain't getting them done for me, don't worry about them. And that's the first things first. Mm -hmm. If somebody ain't paying for you anything of yours, they shouldn't be worried about it. Exactly. Period. So, what are some skills that you hope to learn um, in the future as far as, um, like, nail skills as being a nail tech? So, I did see this thing, and it was, like, water inside of a nail, and it was moving around. Yeah, I want to do stuff like that. I think I seen something like that. You know, like the the snow globe type thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I seen that before. Yeah, that's what we getting into. Okay. That's where I'm trying to be at with it. Okay. And then um, there's this lady I watch on um Instagram. Mm -hmm. Girl, she hands draws everything. Um, I would say her name, but I just really don't know how to pronounce it. But she hands draws everything. She drew um. She drew the whole Kanye West album, the graduation album, mm -hmm. and that's one thing that I said I wanted to recreate. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm happy that my um, new art brushes came in because I'm gonna recreate that okay. and try it. I seen somebody draw Johnny Tess. Oh my god! Um, mm -hmm. She drew Batman. She drew the Matrix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like she like hand draws everything. One time she drew a whole wood setting on somebody's hand. Okay. So yeah, that's something I want to get into. More detail, very detailed, fine art. Have you always been an artsy person? Like yeah. a creative person? Yeah. Yeah. And it's so crazy because my friends would be like, you just too creative for us. Like, because <laughs> I be thinking way out the box. I have stuff that I know that's going to take forever. That's why when I first said six hours, I knew I would have just went way overboard. You were doing why. a dang on science project. Yeah. <laughs> Happy that I dumbed it down a little bit, you know. I'm gonna say dumbed it down. I'm gonna say <laughs> consolidated. Let's yeah. use that word. Consolidated. Just a, just a little bit. All right. So, um, do you have any upcoming collaborations, giveaways, launches that you want to mention? So, <clears throat> we, I am moving into this new suite on White Bluff. Mm -hmm. So I am one. I do want to do something with that, but my one year anniversary for nails is coming up, so I'm doing a whole recreate mm -hmm. giveaway. I'm gonna see. I'm think I'm gonna do five of the sets that I've ever started doing mm -hmm. at my dining room table, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking I'm gonna pick five girls, and I'm also gonna be going to Greenbrier and you know painting the little girls' nails and everything okay. like that. I just saw that they had their um, 70th anniversary. Green right? Yeah. yeah. I was like, no. Oh. There was a whole bunch of people there talking about, like, their experiences at Green Bright. And a lot of people, like, you wouldn't have even thought of who've, like, made, like, ch changes to their life with just going there. And they said that the people at Green Bright helped them so much. So, it's really a blessing to, like know that there's places like that out there in the world still helping people and people think like oh well my family didn't do me right so nobody's gonna want to do like yeah. right by me so and that's yeah and that's something i always thought like my mom and daddy didn't care so you know nobody else is gonna care but 
That's not true. Yeah, you can't like have <laughs> um what is the word? Pre notions. Is that a word? Pre notions, preconceptions. I think it's notions, yeah, like notions, basically pre-notions on other people. Like you can't basically what how other people treated you off of, like how like other people are gonna treat you in the future. Right, and I always did it. That's something I always like. Um, I ain't messing with nobody because I already know how people is. Like I always say, you know, people ain't too much of nothing. Mm-hmm. I gotta get out of that mindset because. I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. And it's so crazy because everybody like, you know how everybody be like, F a love, I'm not going to do this again. Yeah. Girl, my behind be right back in the next relationship. Be like, hello. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to give you test A. I gave test A to so-and-so. If you mess up like they did, okay, bye. I'm on to the next one. Because guess what? That's part of my story. That's what God want me to experience and learn. If I pass that test, and I see what's going on, and then I make the changes, then, I mean, that's it. But, yeah. otherwise, I'm not going to sit up there and be mad because, hey, that's just something that need to happen, I guess. Um, besides those things, where do you see yourself, um, J. Million, <laughs> and where do you see your brand, um, J. Million Calor in five years? So, in yeah. Five years. What's that? How old I be? How old am I? Twenty one. Mm hmm. Twenty six. Jamie Leon. Doug Leon. She'll be twenty six. So I also I always said, at least by twenty five, I need to be a thousandaire. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not a millionaire, but at least a thousandaire. Like I'm gonna push for the millions. But at least a thousand there. I need to at least have that comma mm -hmm. in my bank account. I mean, at least you're being realistic with yourself. You know, like, what you want to accomplish. Like, there's a lot of people who just be out here. Oh, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Nah. If you set your <laughs> expectations how you, like, you know based on your work. And if you kind of, I want to say lowball yourself. And you're putting in the work, you're going to. I, I know you're gonna like overachieve it just because of the fact that like your work is gonna pay off if you're a hard-working person all that stuff is gonna come you gonna get what you wanted plus more and what God has in store for you and plus more so it really I really want any more stress you gonna you gonna be that sooner than you think hopefully that's what the that's what the people keep saying to me the, girl <laughs> that's what God keeps saying I mean the people is talking through God because guess what? God talks to people through other people. Yeah, true, true. So. But that's what I keep hearing. So, y'all, that's really what I'm aiming for. Like, I at least need to be a thousandaire. I at least, you know, in five years, I hope, you know, stuff start popping off. And I could get me at least my first 24-hour shop. And I mm -hmm. want it to be in Savannah. And I want it to be somewhere where nobody would you know it's going to be yeah. let's just uh, let's just start saying it's going to be in so yeah. let's just say just just start talking about the present tense because you know it's, it's gonna happen i'm gonna have a chain of 24 hours but in five years i want that grand opening and i want people to come out because i i ain't gonna hold it like i fuck with savannah like they been fucking with me and it's just so much support and a lot that I wouldn't even think because I'm a square. <laughs> so, right, you ain't no dang on square. You play too I am. much. I'm a square, so I wasn't expecting a too much of nothing, really. You play too much. Talking about some square. For real. But I just love the support. I can't wait to have my first grand opening and everybody, I don't you know. We're going to make this happen. All my Savannah <laughs> listeners, my Savannah Peacemakers, we about to make this happen. So, it's going to be a thing. Go ahead. We need y'all to get um, <sighs> Miss Jade to her goal. We're going to send them prayers up. We're going to send them shares out. We're going to send them referrals out. We're going to do it. Everybody and their bestie need to be in this bitch. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do it. I 
know it. I know it's gonna be amazing. Like if y'all know some people who got some functions going on, who um definitely can use um different vendors and stuff, go ahead and put in a word. You got some people who need to speak, then go ahead and refer her. Cause she has a story that needs to be heard and definitely can help um other younger girls and even grown women. Yeah. So that's all I wanna be around to help. So what is some advice you would give to um Gen Z? So people in our generation, um, who live in a small city that wants to become a nail tech. Go for it. I see a lot of girls now that's, you know, actually going for it now and they'll message me and say, Hey, you know, how you do this, how you do that? And, you know, just go for it. Like, it's not really too much to say about it. Mm -hmm. You just got to gotta believe in yourself first before everybody else do. I'm a strong believer in that. Like, you can't expect nobody to follow and you don't even believe. So, mm -hmm. you got to go for it. You got to believe you can do it. You just got to believe. It's not going to be easy by any means necessary. It's not easy. Nails is, n like, it's not easy. It's expensive, first of all. So, I just said the other day, you got to go broke behind your business. Mm-hmm. So, you do. Don't ever Invest think, in yourself, cause. Yeah. Don't ever think, like... Oh, all of it's gonna come because even now, like, I even now, like, I don't have everything that I want to have to do it every design, or you know, but within time, you just got to believe all of that's gonna come and it'll happen. So, don't be worried about what everybody else doing because I know, like, I get a lot of um things saying, You see this person doing nails now, and it's like, I don't care, yeah. <laughs> I don't care who's doing nails. I support them. I even like some of the girls I see now starting. I like their stuff. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, if one thing like Megan Thee Stallion was saying on her uh, interview with um, Joe Budden, he, she was saying that, yeah, all the new girls, oh, those are home girls. Like, I'm not going to be out here starting beef with nobody and not liking nobody and we all out here trying to do the same thing we yeah out here like it don't doing the same all that thing. don't make sense like and then she was beefing. like the she was like our supporters those are the people who gonna start beefing and that's gonna cause drama and i'm not even that type of person and they do you wouldn't even like i see so many like so many people would come and say girl you see you see such and such doing this and it's like i don't care mm -hmm. let them that's what they want to do. Y'all know I'm all for that. Like, I love it. So don't even, I wouldn't let none of that discourage any of y'all who's doing what. Rather, you want to sell dinners. I don't care what kind of dinner. I seen somebody do that to somebody talking about, oh, y'all, this girl selling spaghetti. So what? Okay. I had a dinner and I brought one happily and that spaghetti was a bust. <laughs> Shout out to Shirley. <laughs> that spaghetti was a bust down. And yeah. but a lot of things like like you were saying, like, okay, a lot of people are doing it, but guess what? You never know. Everybody is not gonna offer the same things. Like right. you being a nail tech, you are for twenty four hours. So whenever somebody is closed, another person will be able to come to you. They're the customer who might need their nail tape.